Hello, everyone. This is Dark Journalist with a very special report on the media pushing an election outcome under false pretenses. Now, as you know, they decided Joe Biden was the winner of the presidential election, even though there are millions of votes yet to be counted in crucial swing states. Now, the media can't decide elections, but they've gone full Big Brother in trying to decide this one. We need to ask ourselves why and show that the presidential race is very much in progress. I'll show you the actual electoral vote maps and some legal motions that may get the Supreme Court involved. Whose vote is it anyway? The citizens of the United States or some deluded media and big tech elites? Let's count the legal votes and see what happens. Okay, so this is the map and where things stood before they called the race for uh, Biden in the media, which was a false call, and I'm going to show you why. And there's nothing official about that call. It's a low point for the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Fox News, and all that participated in it. Uh, and interestingly enough, it happened just two minutes before uh, the lawyer for President Trump, Rudy Giuliani, was to come out and talk about the various legal cases that are launching Monday in this race. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that what they did throughout the calling of the results as Trump was winning dramatically on the night of the election is they tried to give the impression that Trump was behind, which he was not. He was ahead uh, for the whole evening, and they kept coming back to these figures as the days wore on of Trump at 214 electoral votes, which you can see on the right side of your screen, and Biden at 253 on the left side of the screen. So they kept coming back to this figure of Trump at 214 electoral votes, uh, which was not true, and Biden at 253, which was also in error. Uh, with 71 toss-ups. But as I said, this was the state of the race before uh, they started doing the strange vote movements and the mystery ballots showed up and then they called it for Biden very astonishingly after saying, we have to make sure that every vote is counted, uh, but it turned out only if it favored their candidate. Now let's get to what the real map was and how that can help us now. So let's take a look first uh, at Alaska over here, which they should have called on the night of the election because Alaska with its three electoral votes gave Trump 217, and he has a two to one vote advantage going on there with about 60% of the vote in. And interestingly enough, it's a very easy projection since Alaska has not gone blue since 1964, and Trump has such an insurmountable lead. So we saw this over and over again that they would suppress the calls for Trump and the Electoral College while giving all these states advantages that were still counting and projecting them for Biden, just like they just projected him as president uh, very, very prematurely. Okay, so now let's move on to another state, which is North Carolina, uh, which they suppressed again. It was a Trump win. They had it as a toss-up. Let's go in here and add that to Trump's total. That gives him 232. The reason I will do that is North Carolina shows with 99% of the vote in a 75,000 vote advantage for President Trump. The numbers don't lie. Even in the mainstream media, they're showing you that. And so that is clearly a Trump win in North Carolina. No doubt about it. Now in Georgia, uh, Trump had an insurmountable lead going into the home stretch and out of the blue they started finding mystery ballots and things but it's as it goes into a recount you're going to see that go back into trump's column and you're going to see a lot of these predictions about biden and georgia just won't hold up uh, there are also you know i'm not even getting into the allegations of voter fraud yet but we're going to put the georgia back into trump's solid republican uh, category so we're going to put georgia back into trump's category so trump at a certain point with an insurmountable lead especially on election night and with the recount election that they're going to have to do in georgia and throwing out a lot of those mystery ballots you're going to find georgia going right back into trump's column for the win which they wouldn't report or project but that would give Trump 248 versus the media projection of 253 for Biden, leaving only 37 toss-up electoral votes left. Now let's move this up to Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania is very interesting because Trump at one point had an 800,000 vote advantage, clearly dominating the state. And then again, they stop counting mysteriously, mystery ballots show up, 
and they're trying to project it for Biden. What they've done after this strange mystery ballot activity with then the strange call, the false call by the media for the Biden campaign, is they've tried to put Biden over the top with that and then call it and just hope nobody looks into it any further and it just becomes the norm. I can tell you that Trump's lead in Pennsylvania is insurmountable. I'm going to move that back under Trump's win uh, for the Electoral College, bringing him up to 268 to Biden's 253 with 17 toss-ups there in the middle. So there's only really 17 electoral votes left. Nevada has six and Arizona has 11. Now the media, shortly after they called Pennsylvania for Biden, also mysteriously called Nevada. Well, here's what's odd about that. Nevada's actually accepting mail-in ballots until November 10th. So they have no way to know the full count. We have about 180,000 votes outstanding there with about a 15,000 uh, advantage right now for Biden that could easily be overturned. So they have to wait that one out. That one is truly a toss up. Since they gave it to Biden, if he, we did not give him Pennsylvania, that literally just gives him 259. Neither of these candidates would have enough electoral votes to win. And this is very important. So let's put Nevada back into the toss-up category and go to Arizona. Well, Arizona's an odd case because Fox News, very early on election night, called it for Joe Biden. This is very odd for a lot of reasons um, because there were so many votes from different counties that were favorable to Trump that had yet to come in. Now, Arizona has 11 electoral votes, and oddly enough, on election night, Fox News, of all media companies, called it for Joe Biden very unusual considering there were so many counties that were still out and which are still out currently that are favorable to Trump and as the days go by that lead for Biden dwindles and Trump is rising. Now even though Fox News and AP gave Arizona to Biden and Harris, the New York Times didn't which is very significant because they knew it was too close to call and that Arizona was going to be counting and that Trump's lead in those counties may be insurmountable especially since Arizona is known as a red state and hasn't gone Democrat in many elections. Even if Biden won it, it would only take him up to 264 electoral votes. So he's six short and President Trump is two short with six toss-ups left all in the state of Nevada. But if either of these states go to President Trump, for example, Arizona would put him 279 over that 270 electoral vote threshold with 253 for Biden and Harris, not the 290 that they've been running around the media with, which is an absurd number because Pennsylvania is already under a recount cloud and the Supreme Court has told them to separate the new ballots that came in, the so-called mystery ballots, after the original voting took place on election night. Now, normally in a regular election, you count all night and you find out what your totals are sometime that night or at least by early the next morning. You do not wait, stop, review, and then strange votes get added everywhere. This is not a normal process in a democracy, but you see it all the time in banana republics, especially when the Central Intelligence Agency is involved. But let's go back for a moment now. So what you have is a race, which we're looking at two electoral votes left for Trump and Pence to clinch it versus Biden and Harris need 17. There are 17 toss-ups left, which inevitably means, and this is a very key point, Biden would have to take Nevada and Arizona in order to be elected president with 270 electoral votes over Trump's 268. A very tall feat considering they're neck and neck, and in Nevada's case, they keep taking ballots till November 10th, and in the case of Arizona, Trump is rising. Now, in both Wisconsin and Michigan, we have the possibility that because of the software glitches, uh, in one case in Michigan, returning as many as 6,000 votes back to President Trump, that both of those may actually require a new re recanvassing recount, which may change the totals in both of those states. A lot of people see the possibility that Wisconsin would actually go back into the Republican column, which means that President Trump would pull off the win that he needs there, and that is another pathway to victory for the president for real election. Uh, so the things that we've been hearing from the media just don't add up with the facts on the ground at all, and it's very important that we get a fair election. We can clearly see on this map that the tail of the tape is Nevada should not be called because they still have ballots over 180,000 out, 
and they continue to accept ballots until November 10th. And Arizona is basically coming into a very tight territory when it comes to votes of around anywhere from 15 to 20,000 ratio with 180,000 out. Some of those counties coming in are very heavily favored for President Trump, so that could tip the balance there, especially as I said, Arizona is a very red state traditionally. So this is the actual state of the map before anything changes. And one of those states could change the outcome of the election as could the recounts. But let's not be fooled by the call for Biden by the media. The media does not control what happens in a presidential election. The voters and the electors do. Just as an interesting closing thought, it's important to note that neither China nor Russia has congratulated Biden on his projected victory because they know it's coming directly from the media. In fact, very few countries have congratulated Biden. One of them was Israel's leader, Bibi Netanyahu. Trump unfollowed Netanyahu immediately after that. The race is definitely too early to call. The court cases are important. The Supreme Court will get involved. We do need to make sure every legal vote counts. And as I showed you, without the strange projections, Trump is actually leading in that electoral college, especially when we consider the upside down Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan voting Michigas that's been going on. We definitely will get to the bottom of it, but it is way too soon for the media to be doing what they are, is to be practicing a totalitarian form of censorship. And they may even censor this video, but look at that map and spread it, because we need this out there. This is the key information. The race is decided by the people, not a few media elites who can't wait to get their treats at the Davos and Bilderberg meetings. Let's be real, and let's be real honest, and get transparency in this election and see who really won. And if there was voter fraud and it appears to be the case, then let's get ready to prosecute. I'll have more special reports coming up for you. See you soon.